So hi, my name is Peter Oliver. I'm a group leader here at the Department of Physiology, Anatomy and Genetics here at the University of Oxford on this lovely day in, uh, in sunny April. We're here to talk to you today about our work looking at OXL1 and how it protects in a mouse model of ALS in the journal brain and Kevin Liu is the lead author. So let's, let's learn more about it. So one of the pathways that's been implicated in neurodegenerative disease such as ALS or Parkinson's and Alzheimer's is oxidative stress. And we've been working with a protein for a number of years called OXL1, oxidation resistance one, and we know it's important in these pathways. So what we did is we took a mouse model of ALS, called the SOD mutant mouse, we crossed that with a mouse overexpressing OXO1, and really importantly and excitingly, we showed that this delays the progression of the disorder. We showed that having more OXO1 in cells means the mice live longer, it delays the pathogenesis, so it delays motor neuron death, it, it improves their muscle function, and also we show that certain pathways related to neuroinflammation were also delayed by having OXO1 present. So OXO1 um, has been studied for a number of years, um, but we still don't know what it actually does. It was first discovered in a screen for oxidation resistance proteins, that's how it gets its name, oxidation resistance 1, and we know it has a very conserved domain called the TLDC domain. We still don't know what that domain does. But what we do know, and what we've showed very clearly, is if we overexpress the protein in cells, we can protect neuronal cells from cell death. What our, our study of OXO1 is really focusing on is can we stop some of these oxidative stress pathways at an early stage as a really key feature of, of improving pathogenesis in this type of disease. So we're cutting down here down to probably about 10 microns, so that's you know, much thinner than a human hair. And uh, this means we get incredible detail. So a lot of our work was in the, actually in the spinal cord. Um, today I'm cutting some brain, but we also looked at the cortex. This region, this region here, along the, on the curved edge here. Mm -hmm. So that's really what we're looking at. And there's certain regions of the cortex which are affected in, in lots of degenerative diseases, such as ALS. We took brains like this and stained them with an antibody to make sure we can see in more detail the region of the layer of the cortex we wanted. So a lot of the work was done on the spinal cord. Um, so obviously that's one of the key regions in ALS. Large motor neurons are the ones that, that die in, in the motor neuron disease. So we basically have to cut a large section of the spinal cord, many, many hundreds of sections. And this uh, allowed us to count the motor neurons. One of the main things we did in our, in, our, uh, in our brain paper was to look at whether having overexpression of OXO1 in the, in the nervous system of the ALS model mice, the SOD mice, and see if that influenced their motor coordination, their motor function. So what we use is a, is a method called uh, the rotor rod. The SOD mice, the ALS model mice, they don't do very well on this task because they, particularly when they get to around about three months of age, they start to fall off much quicker than controls. But what we found is if we, if we cross our ALS mice with our mice overexpressing OXO1, they did a lot better on the rotor rod task. And what we saw quite strikingly, this is obviously one of the first results that we saw, is that even at uh, P90 and P60, so at two, two months of age and three months of age, when the ALS mice are showing the very, very first signs of their pathogenesis, we start to see differences in, in rotor rod performance. So having OX1 present in a sod mouse actually improved their motor performance compared to a normal sod mouse. We also looked at, at survival, so obviously we need to see when and how long the mice survive. And what we did see again, a very striking and, and significant increase in survival, probably around about 15 20% both in males and females, with the presence of OXO1. And what we saw very strikingly at P90, so at three months of age, we didn't see a difference in cell death between normal, um, normal and wild type mutants and sod mutants. But importantly, at P135, this is toward the end stage of disease, we did see a significant rescue or delay in motor neuron death in sod mice carrying an OXO1 transgene compared to normal sod mice, as you can see here. Importantly, in line with our motor coordination data and with our survival data, we also saw a delay in pathogenesis of the muscles. So we knew that um, overexpressing OXO1 was slowing down the pathogenesis in the sod1 model, but we weren't sure which were the pathways involved. If you remember, we don't know what OXO1 is doing as a function. So we used a transcriptomic study using microarrays, so obviously looking at all the protein coding genes across the genome. This is in the lumbar spinal cord, so the part of the spinal cord affected in, the, in these mutants. In your wild type mice compared to your transgenic mice, we see very few uh, changes in genes expression. Now this is very important because this shows us that having more OXO1 in the system, overexpressing OXO1, isn't, isn't switching on lots of damaging pathways. But the key result here was obviously comparing our, our SOD mice, our ALS model mice that were already starting to show signs of degeneration, compared to those also containing your OXO1 transgene. See the SOD mice as expected, lots of genes deregulated in red here, you can see here compared to wild types, SOD mice carrying an OXO1 transgene, lots of them are back to yellow, effectively being rescued if you like, so they're being uh, delayed and going back to the wild type levels when OXO1 is present. So in summary then I'd say that um, we've shown here that overexpression of OX1 can be protective in an in vivo model of ALS and we think that OX1 is a really important uh, molecule, important protein for protecting neurons against oxidative stress which we're looking to a lot more in the future. If I can find out what OX1 does in the next two or three years then I'll be, I'll be really happy.